untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a red black sacrifice deck updated with Phyrexia All Will Be One, which introduces three copies of Vran Executioner Thane, a two mana 2 2 legendary creature, saying whenever one or more other creatures we control die, each opponent loses two life and we gain two life, only triggers a once each turn, although it can also trigger during the opponent's turn potentially. And then we also have three copies of Ourobrask's Forge, which synergizes quite nicely with Vran, a three mana artifact. At the beginning of combat on our turn, we put an oil counter on it, and then create an X1 red Phyrexian Horror creature token with Trample and Haste, where X is the number of oil counters on the Forge, and then we have to sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next end step. So by sacrificing it, it also counts as a creature dying, so it can potentially drain the opponent for two with Vran. And then we also have two copies of Annihilating Glare to kind of round out our removal spells. A one mana sorcery, as an additional cost to cast it, we either pay for mana or sacrifice an artifact or creature to destroy an opposing creature or planeswalker. It's a pretty versatile removal spell and we've got plenty of creatures and artifacts we can sacrifice to cast it for one mana. And then uh, looking at the rest of our deck, of course we're still an Oni Cult Anvil deck, one of the key centerpieces of this deck. A two mana artifact saying whenever one or more artifacts we control leave the battlefield during our turn, we get to make a 1-1 one, one artifact creature token, and then we can tap and sacrifice an artifact to deal one damage to each opponent and we gain one life. So the Anvil can sacrifice a 1-1 one, one token, which will also trigger Vran, and then we'll get a replacement 1-1 one, one token to sacrifice on the following turn. Then we also have some blood tokens throughout the deck, with two copies of Aldaren Epicure, makes a blood token and deals one damage to the opponent when it enters, and then uh, the full playset of Blood Tithe Harvester, a 3-2 that enters making a blood token, can tap and sacrifice the harvester itself to give an opposing creature minus X minus X, where X is twice the number of blood tokens we control, so that can also act as removal, and if we have a Vran in play we can also potentially drain the opponent as we sacrifice our harvester. And then we have the Reflection of Kiki Jiki from our Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which can also potentially copy our Blood Tithe Harvester to keep making more blood tokens and take out opposing creatures turn after turn. The Shaman also making treasure tokens to start out can give us a small mana boost, and then the treasure also has great synergy throughout the deck. And then the second chapter lets us discard up to two cards and then potentially draw that many. Can also synergize nicely with our two copies of Mishra's Research Desk, a one mana artifact that can pay one mana tap and sacrifice to exile the top two cards of our library, choose one of them, and until the end of our next turn we may play that card. So it can provide a little bit of card advantage, since we can also unearth it for one on a red, so then we'll be able to get two cards total from the research desk. As it's also an artifact we sacrifice, it can also potentially trigger our own cult anvil, so that has a great synergy as well. And then Anvil also works quite nicely with our Experimental Synthesizer, a one-man artifact. When it enters, we exile the top card of our library, and until the end of our turn, we may play that card. Typically, don't want to play Synthesizer on turn one. Instead, if we wait a couple turns, we can both play lands that we exile, as well as potentially cast a three-mana spell if we have enough mana to cast it afterwards. So the longer we wait on Synthesizer, the better. But once we sacrifice it, we can exile the top card once again, so it can potentially provide a nice bit of card advantage, and we can always sacrifice it for two and a red if we want to make a 2-2 Vigilant Samurai token in the process. And then our remaining removal comes in the form of four copies of Cutdown and four copies of Voltage Surge, which can also sacrifice an artifact as an additional cost, which can be a neat way to sacrifice a Synthesizer for one mana. And then of course our two copies of Annihilating Glare. And then at three mana besides Forge and our Fable of the Mirror Breaker, we also have two copies of Obnixilus as the Adversary, which shines against control strategies where they may not be able to take it out very easily. Can cast it using Casualty by sacrificing a creature, in which case we get a non-legendary token of Obnixilus that we get to have alongside the legendary version. And then we can usually start out by making a Devil token that when it dies deals one damage to any target. And then the plus one will gain us two life if we control a Demon or Devil, as well as making the opponent lose two life unless they discard a card. And then we can slowly work our way up towards the minus seven ultimate ultimate as well. And then our mana base has a few new goodies as well, with the addition of Black Cleave Cliffs as a nice untapped dual land if it's one of our first three lands. And the curve of this deck is relatively low, only playing 22 lands, since we can also find more with the Synthesizer and Research Desk. So the Cliffs is the perfect land to start out with, so we don't have to take as much damage from our Sulphur Springs. And then Haunted Ridge will be untapped if it's our third land forward. And then a couple basics, as well as the Abandoned Mire and Crucible, which can be channeled for additional interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. 
got a bit of removal. Got our anvil to start draining, harvester to maybe kickstart the anvil with a blood token. And then synthesizer for a bit of card advantage. Vran also very good with anvil. So starting things out, harvester makes sense. Attacks for the most damage. And we need the blood token before anvil becomes effective. Opponent with a farmhand, so kind of a white mid-range deck here. Okay, anvil. Definitely one of our better cards. So we'll attack and then could play Anvil, make a token, keep a Voltage Surge, could play Synthesizer first. Although if we hit a 3-drop I wouldn't be able to cast it, so I think I wait on it for one more turn. So attack with Harvester. And then it should be fine to start to Anvil. And then next turn we can also add Vran to the board to drain even more. Okay, Loron sadly destroys our anvil. That's a setback. So we'll have to find another one. So we'll start with a synthesizer in case we exile a 3 drop. Which we did. Could have used Voltage Surge end of turn to finish off Loran to maybe let the Harvester attack. Um, does a 1 1 token 1 attack? I think so. Since we have more artifacts to sacrifice in case we pick up another Anvil. But now we can maybe cut down Loran. I'll take the 2. And then Voltage Surge can be saved for a Planeswalker. Okay. So our opponent's likely holding up a Wandering Emperor, although we'll still get a treasure from our Shaman if it attacks. Question is if we want to discard anything. Haunted Ridge can go, and then that's maybe it, since I'm happy to cut down Loron to keep attacking. Voltage Surge will finish off Emperor after the Exile, probably the Shaman. And we found another Anvil, perfect. Now sequencing's gonna be tricky. Could play Vran first in case one of my creatures ends up dying, but they're most likely gonna get exiled. I think we cut down Loron attack. And take it from there. So Wandering Emperor, we'll see if they make a token or exile something. Opponent does make a token. So I have the option of killing the token. Opponent gets to keep Emperor, which can minus next turn. Alternatively, we can finish off the Emperor itself and let the trade happen. And then this turn I'll still be able to play Anvil and Voltage Surge. Yeah, that's probably fine. So let the trade happen. Play Anvil. And I'll just sacrifice a treasure here. Another Lordon goes after Anvil. Fair enough. Never get to combine it with Vran. And a companion to draw. Well, at least we still have our reflection to go with Harvester now. And a forge isn't bad either. So, get the forge going first. Don't want to attack with Harvester into Loran anymore. So just a 1-1 token attacking. And then Vran plus Forge can also drain every turn. Opponent will have to deal with our Reflection. Bangbuster to draw, that's fine. So play Vran first, and then copy Harvester. Now the question is... 
whether I copy Harvester, kill Lore on attack. Opponent can have an Emperor to exile Reflection to here. Yeah, that seems fine. And then we still have our Synthesizer for more card advantage. And I'll hang on to the cliffs to maybe discard with a blood token. So both of these are fine to attack. If our opponent plays Emperor, I guess they can make a Samurai trade for Harvester. And then still Exile Reflection, which would not be ideal. So maybe Harvester has to hang back. Although their opponent is at 9. Opponent takes it. That's great. And we'll pass. And our opponent did have an Emperor anyway. Now you've done it. So they're just going to minus two on Reflection next turn. Back to wandering. Okay, that happens. Opponent back up to six. And an Elspeth Resplendent makes sense. They want to lifelink the Samurai. So that can hit us for 3, back up to 9, and yeah, now we'll have to find a removal spell for it. So Blood Token goes digging. Finds an Anvil, number 3, and a Voltage Surge, perfect. So play Anvil. Voltage Surge, Sacking, Synthesizer. Now our opponent can still crew the Bankbuster to block with, but that's fine. Exile the Cutdown, that one doesn't line up perfectly. So let's see, what if I attack my opponent with everyone here, since we'll get a 3 power token. They could block Vran. In which case, I can cut down my own token to still drain for two. And then Anvil will finish them off. So I think we're good to attack all out. So I could cut down my own token, or even better, just sacrifice a token to Anvil. Which will also trigger Vran. And then six more damage coming across, and there we have it. So yeah, despite Loran keeping our Anvil in check, we still got there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems decent. Good Harvester to kickstart our Anvil, and then Vran to go with Anvil as well. Couple removal spells, and we'll need them against Blue-White Soldiers. Keep up Cutdown. I don't think we're cutting down the officers, since they're scarier. Two and three drops we need to take out. Opponent actually playing green as well. Alright, take our turn. So this is probably reinforcements end of turn. Play Harvester. And then the Anvil token can maybe trade with Officer. Does mean we'll have taken quite a bit of damage from it in the meantime. Although I could also trade Harvester itself with Officer. Right, it's going to be Sentinel end of turn instead. So that can fly over. And now let's see which 3-drop they present. Brutal Cathar, that's fine. Can get our Harvester back. Land would be great. Through a Voltage Surge instead. Still decent. So we can kill Brutal Cathar. Should probably do it now, given that our opponent's playing Zephyr Sentinel to maybe save their soldiers. And then... Do I keep up Cutdown? Or do we kill a Sentinel now? We get another Harvester back, which can also take out an opposing creature. So it's probably fine to just uh, kill the Sentinel now. It's also an argument for maybe using the Blood Token to try and hit a land drop. 
maybe next turn. And then Galera can also sack a blood token if we need to cast it for one mana. Lagrella, reason they're splashing a bit of green. Harvester's gone again. Take two more from Officer. And a swamp was great. So now I'm liking Anvil plus Glare, Lagrella. As we'll get to make a token in the process. Okay, pass it back. And then we've got our Vran to gain some life back in a second. But we might play 3 drop first. Stalwart. Also Soldier. And a Veteran to pump the team. Okay. So I could jump and sack the Construct. Next turn Harvester kills Veteran. And then we'll be able to make more tokens with Anvil. Alternatively, if my plan is to play either Obnixilus or Vran, it might be useful to have more creatures in play. So I'll take three for now, actually. Another Anvil. So, Harvester goes after Veteran. And then do we want to get Fable going? I could Obnixilus sacking the 1-1 one -one token, which will generate another one. And then we can make... A devil start taking up Obnixilis. Kind of like that as well. And the devil's pretty good when our opponent has a bunch of one toughness creatures out. Could even attack first. And this will also gain us some life back. Okay, and then maybe next turn we can double spell our two drops if we draw land. We are out of spot removal, so now if something like the 2-3 uh, flyer shows up to draw extra cards, we could be in a bit of trouble. Can be King Darien, another reason to splash a bit of green. Also a soldier. So now they have better attacks on Obnixilus. So probably want to trade for the officer, chump stalwarts. And then we can sacrifice with anvil before damage. And there's our land, perfect. So now play Anvil, play Vran. Um, can first take up Obnixilus a bunch. And then Anvil sacks a blood token. Although we won't be triggering Vran that way. But by jumping, I guess we'll be triggering it in the opponent's turn. So, sure. Plus. And plus. Is my entertainment. Defy play Vran, play Anvil. And you lose everything. And make a token. And make a couple tokens. Okay, so Nixils is protected. And then double Anvil plus Vran will kill the opponent in a turn or two. Probably gonna chump and sacrifice a 1-1 one -one here. Ooh, Chaos Reconstruction. Okay, that's nice. Makes the Stalwart a lot better if you've got a late game mana sink to find with it. So we'll see what soldiers or opponent gets. Siege Veteran Reinforcements. Pretty good, but uh, yeah, opponent needs to fly over or ground blockers, which they currently cannot do. 
So end of turn do I sack a token. I think it's worth it since we'll drain for three essentially. And then untap. And our opponent doesn't have enough cards to discard to Obnixilis. And then Anvil plus Vran will finish them off. So yeah, opponent had a decent start. We had the cheap removal to keep up. And then eventually Anvil, Vran plus Obnixilis. Powerful engine to close out the game. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Up against Monorad Aggro. So, taking damage of Springs to cast Epicure is not ideal. So, Mountain's a good draw. And then next turn I may need to Glare already. Killing Swift Spear. Upside of playing Springs is that I could potentially double Glare on turn 2. Which, uh, yeah, with double Swift Spear would be reasonable. But we'll just be taking one out. Anvil also an option now. So maybe that's the play. Just play Anvil. Sank the token to make a 1-1. One -one. Potentially plays into End of Festivities. So that's the downside. Or I can just play Anvil and pass. And then next turn by sacking the blood token to Glare. We still make a 1-1 one -one with Anvil. How bad is End of Festivities? Wouldn't be the end of the world. But... Problem is, I wouldn't be left with any artifacts to enable Anvil going forward, so it's not ideal. But I think I still want to use Anvil every turn that I can. And then I could attack with Epicure, since I'm not really planning to double block a Swiss Spear. Sure. And then hope they don't kill my 1 1 token. So next turn we can put our Glare to use. Okay, opponent found double warfare, so they'll only be able to play one of those, and a phoenix chick for now. So we are taking five. But at least by killing some creatures now, we limit the effectiveness of warfare. One one skin attack, since I'll be sacrificing both of them. And then Artifact is more valuable here. If your opponent tries to kill it, we can still sack it to the Anvil at the very least. And then we've got a Forge left over, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting battle. I feel like we're behind at the moment, but it just takes a cheap removal spell to turn that around. So attack with both. I'll be sacking the token to Anvil. At least we're getting some life back as well. So both at 12 at the moment. But would love to get rid of these springs in hand to replace with more spells. As we take 4 in the air now. Opponent likely to have a burn spell which represents potentially 4 more damage. So we could easily be dead next turn. Best I can do is play another Forge. I'll keep one land in hand, but might need more mana if we find a Synthesizer, for instance. And then, yeah, we'll be attacking. So the hope is that there's no end-of-turn Lightning Strike. Vran would have been a great top deck here, draining for two and gaining two. Alright, Lightning Strike puts us to four. So now we're dead to literally any burn spell or haste creature. Since we can chump the Foundry at the very least. Flame Breather plus another spell will do it. And a Lightning Strike, alright. GG's. Close one here, just drew a few too many lanes and not enough cheap interaction. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems decent. Voltage Surge into Harvester, which can enable Anvil for us. Let's see what we're up against. Green-white. And there's a Vran as well. 
So, yeah. Vran, Harvester, Anvil are best buddies. And our opponent on some sort of human's deck. Okay, so we have options. Could go Vran, Sack Harvester to kill Katilda. Keep a Voltage Surge, and that would drain the opponent for two. Or we can just get the Anvil going. But Vran deals more damage. So I kinda like that. And I think Katilda is sort of a must answer here, since it'll give the opponent a big mana advantage. Another option was Voltage Surge, Katilda, and keep Harvester around. Although Voltage Surge can maybe kill bigger creatures later. Especially since we'll be sacking a Blood Token to Anvil. Okay, just a wedding announcement for now. That's fine. And then Harvester plus Anvil seems like the most efficient. Wouldn't be triggering Vran this turn, but we'll make our 1 1 token with Anvil. And then next turn, sacking the 1 1 will essentially deal 3 damage and gain 3 as well. And we drew an Epicure, so now Harvester could give minus 4 minus 4. And there's Katilda. We killed the creature form, and now it's back as a spirit. So Katilda does have protection from vampires, so I can't actually target it with Harvester, so we have to use Voltage Surge to take it out. Which is fine. So let's Voltage Surge Katilda. And then, do I attack with Vran is the question. And trade it for two tokens. That's probably fine, even though I would prefer to keep it around. Opponent just takes it. Sack. Probably 1-1 one, one to trigger Vran here. So our opponents might be planning to disturb Katilda to get a big lifelinker going. And then I'll keep land in hand to maybe discard to the blood token. That's gonna be a right of harmony. Opponent about to make some tokens or play another Katilda. And then get another token end of turn from announcement, which we'll draw with right. So can we deal five damage past a big life linker. Start by using blood token, I think, since again Harvester doesn't kill Katilda. See if we can find a different removal spell. Synthesizer is not bad. And a voltage surge, that should do it. So I can play synthesizer first. Found a forge, which I wouldn't be able to play if I want a voltage surge, so let's do some math. Let's say we kill Katilda, sacking. Could even sack Synthesizer again. Opponent loses their life linker. I could attack with everyone. And then at least one damage goes through from uh, our attack step. And then I've got one more damage from Anvil, so we're actually one damage short, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, let's just Voltage Surge Katilda here, since that seems like a given. And see if we can maybe find something else to help us out. The land still plays Forge. So now we might have enough. So we've got two damage going through. Two more from Vran, seeing a creature die. And then Anvil can finish them off. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is far from perfect, but it's functional. Early cut down, hopefully find something to play on turn two. And then Fable maybe discarding one of Nixilis. Opponent blue-black, turn one Epicure is fine. So now we've got an artifact in case we draw an Anvil on turn two. Opponent Esper colors. And a Harvester, good draw. So we'll attack for one, play Harvester. Which can potentially give minus four, minus four. And then a Fable on Curve. Obnixilis could also sacrifice Epicure or Harvester, depending on how much loyalty we need. And a cut down deals with Harvester, fair enough. Still got our Blood Token. 
and now the Shaman's more likely to stick around. So unclear whether opponent's a pure control deck or if they're playing some legendary creatures. Another popular Esper build. Kind of for now. We'll make a ninja. They will get to keep it for a turn. Since I'm gonna play Fable. And attack for one. Kaito is phased out, so we can't attack it this turn. Okay. And then next turn, cut down plus of Nixilis is looking good. So one of them can go. If our Shaman's guaranteed to survive, we could also discard a lane, since we'll still have the mana for cut down of Nixilis. But a Drown takes care of our Shaman and proliferates onto Kaito. Which can still draw here. So a bit of a setback. Annihilating Glare can also get rid of Planeswalkers. Do I discard Omnixilus land? And then I wouldn't be upset if I drew another land, since I can still make use of the mana. If I don't draw lands, my turn would be a little awkward. So maybe I should just keep the springs, even though drawing another land would be kind of bad then. Yeah, I think it's springs plus Omnixilus. I'm pretty likely to find another land. If not, we'll find more goodies. Alright, Cliffs is tapped, sadly. I think it's just going to be removal this turn. Epic here goes after Kaito. Volter Surge to finish it off. Don't you see I'm trying to help? And then hang on to Cut Down and Glare. Not in a hurry to kill the ninja, but I guess if we want to set up of Nixilis, it's probably fine to get rid of it. And then we want to kill it before it attacks, in case of another Kaito. Now our opponent could just be some sort of Esper Super Friends Planeswalker deck as well. In which case I'm happy to still have a Glare left over. Take our turn. Opponent passing with 5 mana up, so this could be Wandering Emperor for all we know. In which case I don't want to attack with Epicure, instead just sacrifice it to Obnixilus. Or we can get another Fable going. Although if there's a Farewell coming down next turn, I want to make sure I have a Planeswalker in play. So we'll uh, try this. And then Fable can make a Shaman next turn that we can copy with Reflection. Start by making a Devil. And this will now gain two as well. Pass it back. And then we'll see if they have an Emperor end of turn. Nope, just cycling Rafine's Tower. If our opponent goes for a Farewell, I can still sack my Blood Token on the way out. Although it's unclear if I want to get rid of anything in my hand. Maybe Glare, since I won't have an artifact to sack to it anymore. Although I could always make another Devil with Obnixilus to cast a 1-mana Glare. Alright, it's gonna be a Depopulate instead. One damage on the way out. And then now I probably hang on to land to discard to Fable. Omnixilus can keep plussing. Play Fable. And pass. Alright, so we're not in a terrible spot. Got our Planeswalkers doing some good damage. Grasp also costs some 2 life. An answer to an opposing Planeswalker or creature. Okay, Teferi will be able to answer, although it will leave behind a token, perhaps. Take our turn. Vran's not bad either. So discard just a mountain, I think. Keep Vran and Glare. And found a Synthesizer. So, could kick things off with a Synthesizer. Found a land, that's good. So even if I make two devils with Omnixilus, I still won't be able to kill both the token and Teferi. But killing Teferi is probably the priority here. So Glare. And then I could sack the Synthesizer. I think I still just sacrifice a blood token. 
and keep Synthesizer to sacrifice for 3 mana next turn, perhaps. And then we'll minus this of Nixilis plus the other one. You work for me now, Play Vran. And yeah, opponent has seen enough. Opponent's gonna get drained to death here by Nixilis, and then Vran's gonna help out too. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's a bit heavy on the three drops, but we can always discard a few to Fable. So I'll give it a shot. Got to early interaction with Voltage Surge. Turn one planes. Keep up our removal. And the third land was a good draw. Bankbuster we won't be able to take out. Still looking at a turn three Fable most likely. Opnixel is also not at its best when a Bankbuster can pressure it. And between Fable and Forge, we'll probably get more mileage out of a Fable first. Opponent appears to be on a controlling white deck, so cutdown is not going to be amazing. Voltage Surge can at least still damage Planeswalkers. Loran destroys our Fable, that's too bad. At least we still got our Shaman. And then now, probably attack, offer the trade. Play another Fable, or we could cut down Loran and play another Fable, which is probably better. And then next turn we can maybe get our Forge going. Not sure if I want to hang on to Obnixilis, maybe play it after sacrificing a token from Forge. Sarah Paragon will want to take out with Surge as soon as possible, and as soon as we make a treasure token we can do so. So cut down can go, and maybe one Forge. Look for something like Anvil. Found another Forge anyway. So play Forge, move to attackers. Now they will still be able to crew the Bankbuster with Sarah Paragon, so maybe at that point I don't sacrifice a treasure to kill Paragon and just finish it off with a Voltage Surge, since they'll be able to kill a Shaman token anyway. And this way we save ourselves a treasure token. Could also wait for them to block and then kill Paragon. Alright, Pwn's actually crewing Bankbuster before blockers. But of course if we kill Bankbuster then uh, our opponent still has a Paragon to bring it back. So Paragon's the bigger problem card. Opponent blocking the 1-1? One -one? No, reconsiders. Blocks a Shaman anyway. Yeah, I think we let that happen. And then Voltage Surge the Paragon anyway. And then I might wait on Obnixilis for another turn. Play another Forge first. Although we'll see here. Opponent with a wedding announcement can make a token end of turn. And now the roadside reliquary can draw to. Ossification will clear our shaman. Fair enough. Get a reflection. And yeah, we can play both Forge and Obnixilis here. So that seems fine. And then we'll probably sacrifice a two-powered one. Opponent actually trades. Which is a bit surprising. But I'm still interested in getting an Obnixilus down with casualty. And then we'll make a devil, and then plus the other one. That seems fine. The damage is adding up. We've got planeswalkers dealing damage, artifacts making hasty tokens. So unless there's a farewell here, we should be in good shape. 
Okay, the Dawn Sky can crew Bankbuster, although we can jump with a Devil. And our opponent's just drawing anyway. So, can we close out the game next turn? We're certainly going to get close. Opponent does get another 1 1 token. Can maybe force them to discard with Obnixilus, and the air opponent has given up. Too much damage coming in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Epicure sets up Anvil. Voltage Surge as removal. Up against Black Green, and looks like maybe an Obliterator fight deck, as we see a Black Green land and a Bushwhack on one. So our deck's not the best at dealing with Obliterator, since we don't want to damage it. Cut down doesn't take it out, so we just have Glare as kind of a clean answer. But for now we'll get our Anvil going. And double Anvil's pretty powerful. Take three from Underdog. And there's another one. Opponent stuck on two lanes for the time being. So, a couple options here. Could play Anvil, just sack a token, make two more, play Epicure. Could also Voltage Surge the Underdog to start attacking, but I feel like I need to keep Surge for something scarier. And then for now just Epicure plus Anvil is fine. Now I guess Harvester is potentially an answer to Obliterator, so if we play the next turn it's still gonna be in play in time for us to potentially get enough blood tokens to uh, give minus six minus six, or potentially minus four and then a Voltage Surge can finish it off, even if we have to sack two permanents. So we'll just take the damage once again. And a Trespasser. Okay. No creatures in Graveyard at least. And then I might be okay discarding Research Desk to the Voltage Surge here to take out Trespasser. And get a nice attack in. And then I can save myself a bit of damage by playing Abandoned Mire. And then next turn we can unearth the research desk, perhaps. Attack for four. And pass it back. I'm considering chumping an other dog and sacking to Anvil now. If they attack all out again. Although they might hit the brakes now. Okay, when it comes down Harvester, that happens. And both underdogs attack. Alright, I'll jump and sacrifice here. Especially if a shield rich shows up, I don't want to be too low on life. And given that they kept a somewhat greedy one lander with bushwhack, they must have some powerful cards in hand. Synthesizer is not bad, so we'll start there. In case we exile three drop. And that's a powerful three drop. So attack all out. Obnixilus sacrifices a construct to casualty, triggers anvil twice, can make some devil tokens, and our opponents can be too alone in life to recover. Awesome. Alright, so we get to see our red black sacrifice deck in action, and I was quite impressed by the addition of Vran in this list. The Oil Forge also did some good work, but it's important to back it up with enough interaction so you can prolong the game to get the most out of the forge since it takes a while to get going. But yeah, pretty happy with how the list ended up. So for now I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.